Oh, that's what it's telling me. But it is Matthew through Revelation, and I, I highly recommend it. So Romans chapter 8 says, The world and all you think about the world is illusion. Well, there you go. There is not one thought that you have about the world that is true, except the world, except that the world has no truth in it. This is a true thought. <laughs> this is a true thought given to you by me and echoed through Jesus. Me meaning the Holy Spirit. This is what he meant when he said he had overcome the world. This is what he meant when he said that his kingdom is not of this world. Jesus learned through willingness to see that the world is not truth and truth is not of the world. The mind that believes in the world believes what it experiences to be true. And so it lives the experience as if it is true and it suffers heartache. But the mind that accepts the spirit's interpretation of the world accepts that the world is not true. And so it does not suffer its experience because it has accepted that truth is beyond experience. This mind knows peace because it also knows that which isn't true cannot affect the truth. Life is not in the world. Life is beyond the world. The Spirit of God is life, but the Spirit of God is not in the world because the Spirit of God is truth and there is no truth in the world. You are life and you are truth also so you must not actually be in the world for there is no truth in the world the world is an illusion of experience within the mind you are not in the world you are the son of god not by your birth which is illusion but by your truth which is of god you need not earn who you are by acts in a world of illusion you are who you are through truth which is of god the world is a world of thought, and every thought that you have ever had is expressed in the world. It's a busy world, isn't it? Mm -hmm. But the world is like a playground where thoughts can be expressed freely without affecting reality. You have become lost in the playground of your mind, and you have frightened yourself there. But your home is unchanged and unaffected by your imaginary play. Your father's heart knows only your truth. And now you are called to lay aside play and come home to truth, to the truth of who you are. Creation is not suffering over your experience in the world. Heaven sheds not one tear. For heaven neither cries nor has compassion for that which hasn't happened. My dear child, listen to me now and listen to me well. All that you ever experience, all that you experience and believe to be true is not true. It is an experience dreamed up within your mind to satisfy a curiosity that you posted. Only you have come to believe your own dream and this, this is why you suffer. Heaven does not believe what isn't real. And heaven does not suffer. But she does wait eagerly and lovingly to welcome you back to the realization of yourself. Be at peace and know your truth within your heart. All right. The love that you are is written there as a reminder of your truth. Be quiet and know your truth. Be still a moment and know all is well. The Holy Spirit is your truth. This is why he knows your prayers. You are your Holy Spirit and your Holy Spirit is you. Open your mind and welcome yourself unto yourself. All are God's sons, and all are predestined to know themselves, because all are a reflection of one mind. There is no separation, because there is no truth outside one mind. That which exists within one mind is that mind, and so it is true. The thoughts within the mind reflect the beliefs that the mind holds dear. Beliefs are based on judgment, and judgment is based on desire. To the desire that leads you to judge is the desire to express self-will. Behold, look at the world. This is the expression of self-will which you desired. And now you know you do not want this desire or these thoughts. You are ready to return to the one will that is your father. Say goodbye to your dream and to the ancient desire that has grown cold. Return with me to what has never changed and to that which remains true forever. There is nothing to fear within a world of illusion within the mind. There are only thoughts to look at as you decide you do not want them anymore. Take my hand and follow me as I lead you back to your father. Do not shrink from your dream as it is not real. 
Your hiding will only delay us on our path. Let's hurry now. Back to the joy of your father. Let's pass through your dream, see it is not real, and return in glee to all that is real and has not changed. So the point, my point here is, become glad for all that you see. Become glad for all that is around you, reminding you, wake up. Wake up. Wake up to who and what you are. Everyone is your friend. Everyone is your friend. When I sat in that diner the other night, and once again it washed over me, this, the, the promise that I heard early on in Unity, which was, as God is for me, nothing could be against me. Well, if that's the case, as God is for me, everything is for me. And what is it for me? It is for me to wake up. To wake up to what I am. It doesn't tell me I have to leave the body to do it. Nowhere did I hear that in that reading. I just have to come home in spirit. I have to come home in spirit. And the awakening in spirit awakens within the body. And all of the intelligence in my being. I shall know what to do with my body. I shall know what to think of my body. I shall know what to do with yours and think of yours. I shall know what to do and think of this world. I won't be confused about what is real and what isn't real anymore. So imagine this now. Everyone that you come in contact with is no accident. All these beings that you see and think about and every thought you have of them and every thought that is had of you is no accident. Uh, Scott's about to sing a song called Trick of Fate that David wrote for a movie. But it's, it seems like it's a trick of fate that brought us together. That said, you know, the, what... Why are we together? I mean, it's laughable that I'm here with you guys, quite frankly. What in Washington, Pennsylvania, in the 1960s and 70s told me I'd be up in, where are we, Norwalk, Connecticut? <laughs> <laughs> with you people. What? And with him. And vice versa. What in your past said you were going to be with the nice Reverend Sean Moninger one day? <laughs> about the Ford dealership. <laughs> As we said long ago here, I did not leave high school most li voted most likely to be a minister. And as Scott reminded, I may have been voted most likely to need one. <laughs> well, it was both. I was most likely to be one, and I was most likely to need one. You guys are my minister. You guys, those guys out there. The ones I like and the ones that just grind me. They're my friends. And something brought us together, and I'll tell you what it is. And I'm going to tell you what has brought you together with everybody you encounter. It's your desire, your great longing to wake up and see God. To see the face of God. You can resist it for as long as you want, because time isn't real. And there is no time in God. God doesn't have a deadline. So, you can put it off. I can put it off. But I don't have to. It's not a rule. I don't have to wait and see how the dream works out. This could be it. This could be how the dream works out. I wake up now. Imagine that. So, something brought us together. To be in love. To be in peace to be in joy. And the something is my great longing to say, okay, God, I'm here.